Greetings to another video. Today we're going to talk all about saddle comfort and how to avoid saddle discomfort. And this is because I guess over the past month I've just ridden over about 2000 kilometers and in that time I've been in the saddle for around 100 hours and on those rides on Strava and on the comments on the videos a lot of you ask how do you sit in the saddle for that long without getting like a sore arse? Like how do you do it? So I'm going to share a few of the things that I've learned over the years to enable me to be able to sit in the saddle for a long time without getting any discomfort. So the first thing, and actually I've learned a few of these little tricks from Philbert, who worked with Team Sky British Cycling, and this is one of them. And I was at a talk and he basically just said, do not wax and do not shave in that area because when you do that, you are increasing your risk of getting ingrown hairs, which then lead to just really uncomfortable saddle sores. So if you are wanting to remove hair, you get laser, IPL, and generally do it in a time where you're not doing loads and loads of riding. So that's what I would suggest. The next one goes kind of without saying, it's get a really good saddle and a really good pair of shorts. So good doesn't necessarily mean really expensive, but it just means that it works for you. And I wish I could just recommend like, this is the saddle that's gonna work for everybody. These are the shorts that are gonna work for everybody, but it is a little bit of trial and error. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I wish there was just one saddle, but there's lots of different types of saddles, so you can get on with different shapes. There's ones with cutouts, ones without cutouts. Uh, one thing that I would do is measure your sit bone width and get a corresponding saddle to fit your sit bones. And even if you're really small or really big, doesn't necessarily correlate with your sit bone width. You could be really small with wide sit bones or a larger person with narrow sit bones. So make sure you do that. And with shorts, just try them on. For me, like I'm quite specific with the shorts that I have. Like I, d I don't like um, like really thick leg grippers and the chamois gotta be like super comfortable. Then we come on to saddle angle. So you might have the most amazing saddle in the world and it's perfect for you, but if it's not set up properly, it's gonna feel painful. So again, another Phil Burt tip is when you've got the saddle on your bike, make sure it's between zero and minus three degrees. You can use it, I like there's a, a spirit level thing on your phone um, and a degree measure, I don't know what it's called, but you can measure the degree angle of what your saddle is. So make sure it's between zero and minus three, just for like optimal comfort. And actually, weirdly, my saddle had somehow moved and the saddle was slightly up and last time I went to see him, it's like, oh, that saddle looks a little bit nose up. And I actually had been getting a little bit of like saddle discomfort, but I was like, oh, it's just because it's my winter bike. Maybe it's that. And he's like, no, 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 no. You need to, so he can just see it. So I'll leave his details. If you're actually, if you're having a lot of saddle issues, you can get like saddle pressure mapping done and he's just amazing. So I'll leave his details below if you want to go and do that. But a lot of these things you can just do at home, do all these first. And then if you're still having real issues, go and see Phil or go and see a bike fitter. The next one is chamois cream. Um, I have, this is like full disclosure, I have worked with Slipstream before in the past. I'm not, this is not a paid thing for them, but this is the, the chamois cream that I have used for years and years and it is my favorite one. I think it's the best one that there is. And it's basically a really small company. It's two guys and they wanted to make a really natural, really good chamois cream. And this is phenomenal. Like the first ingredient is aloe vera, but this lasts me around a year, one tube, and you don't need a lot. And what I like is it's a tube, so you can always share. So if you're on like a bike packing trip with friends, you can share it. You don't have to like dip, I don't know, dip in pots. That always grosses me out. Um, and with this one, what I like about it and why it's so good and when they formulated it, basically when you put it on, I'll show you, um, it's like, um, it goes like talc on your hands, oh, not on your hands, wherever you put it, I'll go onto that in a minute. But when you put it on, it just kind of like disappears and it's just really, really, really good. And the reason for that is when they, what they were saying is that when you've got like a really thick chamois cream that's like gloopy or thick, that basically like wears away to nothing. And then if there's any salt, I guess that you've sweat out, it just kind of then crystallizes and then causes chafing. And then that's why they don't really like all the other ones that are on the market. Whereas this one is amazing. Like there's nothing, it's just, it doesn't feel like you've got anything on. So where to actually put chamois cream? Cause that's another question that I get. You basically put it where you come into contact with your saddle. So I, and then you can also put it 
in your chamois. So if I'm gonna do like a really long ride, I'll do bow. So I'll use, use it on myself and then also in my chamois. But yeah, it is really good. I think it's 20 pounds. I think you get two, it's on Amazon. I'll leave a link below if you are interested. Also, you can use this afterwards. So if you have been on like a super long ride, I do this when I've been on like mega long days. You can use it as like a soothing gel afterwards. So you can't even really tell it's on, but it's not greasy, it's not gloopy, but it just works. So definitely a thumbs up for, that's so cheesy, a thumbs up for Slipstream. And next one is get out of the saddle often on long rides, especially on flat rides. You just basically want to let the blood flow around the body properly. And if you are just constantly sat down all the time, that's not gonna happen. So that can cause saddle discomfort as well. And the last one is as soon as you get home from a ride, whip those bibs off because if you get home and you sit in your bibs and there's like it's kind of warm and bacteria can grow and like you can just get skin breakdown so as soon as you can get out of those bibs get some air get get a shower put some slipstream on afterwards for like a an after balm um, but yeah, just don't sit in bibs because that can cause problems then for when you go out again. And I think saddle comfort is something the more I guess more hours you are in the saddle, the more you kind of like tweak everything to make it better. But I remember when I did Lance and Jonah Groats and I did feel bad. There were some people, mainly men, just in so much pain. And each at the at the stops, they were like scooping out like pseudocreme and like just slathering it on themselves. And I remember like riding along and this guy had got black bibs and just there was pseudocreme like oozing out from his shorts. And I was just like, oh. It doesn't need to be like that. If you are still having issues, honestly, I can't recommend Phil enough. Like go and see someone, it doesn't have to be Phil, go and see someone, spend the money and get saddle pressure mapping because yeah, you just don't wanna be in pain on the bike. It should be fun. Any other questions, I might do like an endurance Q and A. So any other questions that you've got for that, leave them in the comments below. Bye, bye, bye. Um, I love it, I love, I'm gonna, Bob, I don't know how you say it. New bike day, new bike day, new bike day!